Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've got a really modern build going on here. Fort Wayne, Indiana for Hammond Homes, my usual builder. We've got Pine Valley Golf Club right behind us here. Really cool project, but it's kind of making me have to develop some new systems around trim packages because of the modern trim details that we're doing. And I wanna show you that inside this house. So just a little context here. I've got Paul here. I'm here, we're doing our normal framing prep right before drywall where we mark studs, plumb doors, stuff like that. But we also have to shim all the windows in this house because they all get drywall returns with this modern trim style. But uh, as you can see behind me here, we've got the golf course. Unfortunately, I do have the golf clubs on board today, but they won't be getting any action. Uh, I looked it up and this is a private country club so I can't get in there. So with modern trim packages, we're doing a lot more window drywall returns with no casing around those. If we go over to another project we've got going on across town that's just about wrapped up, you can see what these drywall returns actually look like whenever they're finished. So what we need to do is shim out the rough openings for these drywall returns in advance that way our reveals are all nice and consistent the whole way around the window. So going around the house right now, the first thing I'm doing is ripping a bunch of two by, two by material down into shims. That way we've got a, uh, a nice consistent reveal going around these windows. Just to give you a visual, uh, half inch OSB, just pretend this is drywall here. If we tried to apply this directly to our framing material, uh, here it looks okay actually, but then once we get up here, we've got a much larger space and you can see we wouldn't even be covering the jam. So what we need to do is rip <coughs> material so that we can fill in this gap so that it's consistent the whole way around. So here I've got a piece ripped, we'll staple that on and then here we've got a piece as well that will bring all of our drywall so that the back edge is even with the outside of the window. Okay, so after I've got my pieces ripped, we're gonna staple these. I find that uh, the 18 gauge stapler works pretty well. Like finished nails don't quite have the holding power that we need, so an 18 gauge stapler is ideal. We can just go along here and nail this on but I wanna point something out. You'll notice that what I ripped this framing material at to shim this is, is not going all the way back to the window. This house is not insulated yet and I need to leave enough space that the insulator can get back in here and spray foam around these windows. So I'm leaving this back at least probably 3 8 of an inch from the window. That way there's plenty of room in there to get insulation in. I will say I do like getting in at this stage to install these shims before insulation has been done because if we didn't do that, we would probably end up having to cut all of the spray foam that uh, expands outward off to clean this up in order to install our shims. I've had to do that in the past and it's just a lot more work. So us getting in here first and installing first saves us a little bit of labor. So whenever I first started having houses that were specifying drywall returns, I was trying to think through the process on what would be the fastest, most efficient, most cost effective way to get this done. Talk to a couple other builders uh, that I'm friends with from Instagram um, and kind of determined that the fastest way to do this was just to rip down two by material on the table saw. And I found that that really works well you might be tempted in your mind to think, well, I'm just gonna cut square blocks out of plywood at different thicknesses and stuff like that. It doesn't really work well. And I also find that you wanna have continuous support all the way going up behind the drywall since it's such a small, narrow piece. We don't wanna just have a bunch of shim points all throughout. Continuous shimming is a lot better option here, and it's just been working out really good for me. So ripping our material, uh, should you use two by fours, two by sixes, I've found that either works great. The thick or the width of the shim that works pretty well is about an inch and three quarter. So you can rip a two by four directly in half and then turn it on edge, or you can rip a two by six into thirds and then rip that on edge as well.
Just on a side note, usually whenever we're doing trim work, we're using a 40 tooth blade. I like the Tenru gold metal blades. It's a thicker kerf and it's just not great for ripping down framing material like this. Here, I've got a 24 tooth thin kerf blade. And whenever you're making these really high rips through this material fast, a thin kerf blade with less teeth is really ideal. It's much easier on the saw and just much easier to push the material through. So we've ripped our two by four and a half. So now we've got two pieces approximately an inch and three quarter wide. At this point, we're just gonna measure the thicknesses that we need around the windows. I take the smallest, narrowest measurement and that's what I rip my material at. So we'll take these, turn it on edge so that it's an inch and three quarter vertically. You can adjust the saw to the thickness that I need. Here I need 5 sixteenths, and then we'll push it through again. One tip, whenever you're doing ripping like this and you're, you're ripping narrow pieces, it's a little difficult sometimes to use a push stick and it gets a little hairy because if my push stick slips and goes down in here, that would be a bad deal. Um, what I like to do a lot of times is I'll push my material halfway through, push down back here, flip it up, and rotate it and push the other half through. And that way my, my hands stay back here away from the blade the whole time. And I'm not gonna have to get up here and risk something binding or slipping or something like that. Now our next problem when we're trying to do this is a lot of these windows are gonna have the same consistent space the whole way up. But sometimes that space is gonna be different between the outside of the window and the framing here. It's gonna vary and taper and curve and do all kinds of crazy stuff. What I do in that situation is whenever I'm taking my measurements, I measure along the window to see what I'm gonna need and I look for my narrowest point. And so here, my narrowest point is gonna be about 5 sixteenths. If you look at this shim, down on the bottom, I'm nice and consistent. The front of my shim is gonna match up nicely to the back side of the window here, and then our half inch drywall will go over the top of that. But as we get higher, you'll see that there's a much larger space here. If I just go ahead and staple this shim onto the framing, I'm gonna have an inconsistent reveal whenever they put their drywall on here. So some of these we are gonna to have to shim out. So we're essentially shimming our shims. I'm gonna show you what I do there. It's really not a big deal and it goes pretty quick. Okay, we got a nice big window here in this master bedroom. I'm gonna start stapling my shim on um, here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go up top as well and look for where it matches up where I want it to be. And then the rest of the area, I'm gonna have to uh, shim it out. So to do that, we've got a couple different options. These here are 16 inch thick drywall shims. Um, you can insert these into behind your wood shim and build them up as much as you need. So here I can see I actually need almost 3 16 So three drywall shims built up would bring this in plane where I need it to be. I do find these are a little bit difficult to cut by hand. Um, because we're also doing so much ripping, uh, I have the opportunity just to make my own shims as well. And the nice thing with wood is it breaks much easier. You can snap these in half and it's no big deal. The bad thing with this, these drywall shims is you have to cut them. Uh, otherwise they'll just bend and you can kind of try and tear them but it just doesn't work very well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and show how to do this with the, the drywall shim technique here. Just carrying around a bunch of uh, pieces 
but basically I want to insert those behind my wood shim and just raise and lower it until I see that I'm on plane with the back side of the window and then I'll go ahead and put a staple in it or two. Now we do want to have pretty decent support um, because the drywallers are going to come and they're going to screw their drywall uh, to this and it's going to go into the framing. So here I've got this space that's basically a two foot space and if the drywaller decides to put a screw right here, it's just going to suck that shim in. So I really need to have shims probably about every 12 inches to 16 inches to make sure that this is supported enough the whole way up. So again here, I'm just going to take two shims and I'm going to watch this plane, raise it and lower it until it's uh, where I want it to be. Here I use two shims instead of three up here. And then once we're done, you got a couple options. One would be sharp utility knife blade to cut these off and they will cut pretty decent. So using the utility knife just takes a couple slices and they cut pretty cleanly. Uh, you could also use your multi-tool and buzz those off as well. So this window is a good example of where you have one side that's perfect, you can just nail your shim on, and then another side where you've got to shim your shim. If you look up along here, we're nailed tight on the bottom, and then you can see this gap keeps getting larger as we go to about 3 16 worth of shims up through this area, but this allowed us to have the face of our shim nice and even with the back side of the window. And then again, we'll be able to apply drywall on here and have a nice, perfect uh, reveal the rest of the way, all the way around. That reveal will end up being about a half inch, I believe. Yep, right on a half inch. And so another question is, okay, how precise do you have to be with this? Well, if we're ending up putting our drywall on here and we have about a half inch reveal. If you've got a 16th variation, that reveal is gonna help hide and disguise that. The smaller your reveal is, the more precise you need to be in your alignment. So really, I'm just trying to get my shim material plus or minus a 16th of an inch all the way around this window. Um, and we've had really good results. Again, if we look at this ha other house that we've got finishing up right now, I was pretty happy with how everything came together. I used this same technique to, shame, to shim those windows and it looks really good, nice and crispy reveals all around. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I know this video is a little bit more for my builder professional friends and professional carpenter friends. Um, but this is a trend we're seeing a lot more of, and I just wanted to show what actually goes into this process. So we'll have more content on this house. It is very modern, so unfortunately the trim package isn't going to be as heavy as a lot of my houses are, but it's still going to be a really cool project to see come together. So stay tuned. We'll keep you updated.